Well, you know, it's been two weeks and a lot happens in two weeks. And so it's finally good to sit down and get some thoughts across. You know, behind the scenes, I've been airing out all my dirty laundry to Mike. And I'm really hoping that the day never comes by that me and him, even though we're family, no longer become cool because he could blackmail me <laughs> by telling my wife <laughs> and my children everything I say. <laughs> but also in those two weeks, there's been so much that's happened. You know, it's been spring break. Uh, we got Moon Knight. We had some other things pop off. And so it's time for another episode of the Nation 80 podcast. Almost said comics, but the Nation 80 podcast, episode 11. We're still here, baby. We ain't going nowhere. And it is your boy Rod. And I'm here with my cousin Mike. Mike, what's cracking? Yeah, man, we've been gone. Uh, you went on vacation. Uh, I went on vacation. And now we are back. We have been craving to get back online, to get back to re- to recording uh, th- these episodes. Uh, it's much needed, uh, you know, doing the vacations was cool with the families and all. Uh, but I'm I'm ready to get back to talking about uh, the, the geek culture. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what's kind of funny, right? I need the vacation from the vacation, right? Where you've done so much to make sure everybody's accommodated for and had a good time that now it's time for the vacation from the vacation. It sounds crazy, but people act like there's no work to be done. But oh, no. <laughs> That's where some of your best work must be done, especially with small children. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like you said, we had so much um, come out since we've been on vacation, whether it's been trailers or TV shows. Like you said, Moon Knight has been out now. We've had Halo out now. We've had trailers for uh, Miss Marvel. Yeah, we've had we've had a whole bunch of stuff uh, over these last few weeks, uh, and uh, I'm excited to talk about it. Yeah, man. So let's, you know, let's kick this off right, man. Uh, Let's talk about my boy Moon Knight. Um, As we know, Moon Knight came out about two weeks ago. We haven't had an opportunity to talk about it. And we'll talk about it again after all episodes are, you know, finished or, or, you know, the season ending. Or I don't know if this is season ending or series ending. They haven't really announced that yet. But uh, regardless, Mike, let's kind of talk about at least episode one and, and maybe a little bit of episode two. Uh, as we know, uh, we are we are being introduced to Moon Knight in a very interesting way in terms of his personality is still there, but we're seeing I, I've seen everybody. I've seen Mr. Khonshu, excuse me, I've seen Khonshu, I've seen Moon Knight, and I've seen Mr. Knight uh, mm-hmm. within these past two episodes. Mm-hmm. And Oscar Isaac, to me, is doing a phenomenal job uh with moon knight uh I, there's there's some things i can nitpick on but it, it's not really worth it personally um i think the the moon knight moon knight himself as far as the costume i think it's great i do have a little bit of an issue uh as far as far as how the overall mask look but um again it's just being nitpicky it, it doesn't take away from how cool the the suit personally is um the the other thing is is we have ethan hawk as the villain now i will say to me that's a little uh you know that that would be kind of my negative too but i want to see where they go with that um just because it's you know not this superpower being from the jump that's just like wrecking supreme havoc havoc on everything but i don't necessarily need that for this to work and like i was telling michael before looking at at especially episode one tells me what venom could have been and Mm -hmm. let me phrase why i say that and one of my issues with venom is the individual or the character who plays the symbiote um to me it's just super annoying um they you know they just make it seem like i'm a loser and all this stuff you're venom you are like by far uh one of the more powerful aliens out there and you eat people but yet you're you know saying that you're this loser character and and just how i don't know his personality was super annoying right right what i thought was cool was looking at stephen grant as moon knight 
as he's going through his, you know, his his issues of apparently what he believes is almost borderline sleepwalking in the middle of the night is that he would literally have his eyes go in the back of his head. And when he came to everything is, you know, you could tell that utter chaos is taking place Mm -hmm. and you can, he can also hear Khonshu and Khonshu kind of speaks when needed. He doesn't speak too much, but he does more than enough for you to get to the gravity of who he is as a character. And some of those elements, I think, would have worked so good in these Venom movies, right? Uh, the symbiote didn't, doesn't have to talk all the damn time. And then sometimes he needs to have more meaningful conversations with Tom Hardy or Eddie Brock instead of just talking to be talking. Right. And, and and I think that's where they kind of dropped the ball on it. And so I think it was kind of cool to see how Khonshu interacted with Stephen Grant and how he interacted with uh, Mark Spector. So, you know, you can even have that element, you know, previously where, you know, Venom is kind of speaking to him through a reflection of some sort. Right. But uh, the, to me, there was just so many different, this, to me, this was a very fresh idea, especially with someone with a multiple uh, personality disorder and watching them go through the the different levels or stages of how they handle that. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, what's your initial thoughts on Moon Knight episode one and two? Yeah, I, you know, so Jen and I watched the first episode and she was completely lost and she's looking at me for answers. And I told her I, before we watched the show, I was like, look, I don't know a whole lot about Moon Knight. He's one of those obscure characters in Marvel. And uh, I, I've just started reading uh, Jeff Lemire's run on Moon Knight in which he deals with issues of multiple personalities and whether he's dreaming or whether he's in reality. And so I, uh, when I watched the first episode, I'm like, man, yeah, this is almost kind of, it's not a, you know, shot for shot remake of Jeff Lemire's run on uh, Moon Knight. However, it, it's got that kind of theme. And I was listening to an interview with uh, Oscar Isaac who plays Moon Knight and uh, he was talking about how uh, Kevin Feige called him and was like, hey, you know, we kind of think you would be great for Moon Knight. And he was like, who the hell is Moon Knight? And, and you know, Oscar Isaac was like, I, I do read comics and uh, I understand, you know, the gist of Marvel. I just don't know who Moon Knight is. And then as he started reading Moon Knight, he didn't, and he didn't specifically say which runs he read, uh, but... I had to imagine if you've read the Jeff Lemire ones, you have a guy who's dealing with mental illness and uh, is having trouble sleeping. He's in an insane asylum and he's got these multiple personalities and he can't distinguish between what's real and what's not real. And so that's what you kind of get in this show because he's like, I really wanted to make this character my own and uh, really wanted to emphasize the, 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 the mental part of it. Where, like you said before, he's having he has a sleep disorder, uh, and so he's having to chain himself to the bed, and he's got the circle of sand, and he's got the tape on the the door, and um, it it was great, you know, when he he was in danger and uh, or he was falling asleep, Mark Spector would come out, you know, and do his thing, and then he would wake up, and uh, Stephen Grant would wake up, and then he's in a another country or the, the villains or the mercenaries that have been defeated. And he's just, I, I don't know. I thought it was great. Um, I thought it was a very different, it's a very different show from all the other Marvel shows. You know, you, you got WandaVision, you know, Wanda and Vision and what they're doing. They're the mainstay characters with the Avengers. And then you got Loki and his show. And then you got Sam Wilson and the Winter Soldier in their show. And, uh, you know, it's very main stay, uh, main canon characters that you're used to. But then now you have Moon Knight and you've got this guy who is seemingly crazy. He's crazy. He doesn't know how to interact with normal people. He's talking to, you know, one of those human statues. And that's mm-hmm. that's the only person he could confide in um, is a human statue. Uh, and so... I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Um, 
you know, like you said, we saw Moon Knight, we saw um, uh, the the Moon. Uh, what did you say? The Moon Kanchu and Mr. Uh, Knight. Oh, Mr. Knight. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. we, and we saw Kanchu. I thought that was great. Uh, Ethan Hawke. <laughs> I thought the opening scene in the the first episode. I was I was very confused about. It. I was like, okay, so he took a shot. He broke the glass. He put the glass in the sandals. And then he, he put the sandals on and then walked away. I wasn't sure what that was. All. I'm sure it's an Easter egg. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, I loved how the way episode two ended. I'm excited to see what they're going to continue to do. Um, and what Kanchu is all about. Uh, so it's, I, yeah, I'm, I'm all in on Moon Knight. Yeah. And I think we got maybe either episode three or episode four is going to be that origin story. And then I think we'll afterwards, we'll get to the real meat and potatoes of what's taking place here. Cause this is only six episodes and which is kind of, of course, you know, the pro and the con, like uh, Marvel knows how to knock it out for six episodes. The downside is it's six episodes. Right. So, right. you know, you're, you're kind of wanting more, but you don't know when you're going to get more or even when, you know, just now that those two things are morphing together between television and movie, you know, what is Moon Knight going to be in next? Like, I think me and you are, I was speaking to someone, the conversation was uh, that we, we could possibly see Blade in the Moon Knight TV series, right? Which would be kind of cool. But then on the other side, where will we see Moon Knight? Will we see Moon Knight on in Doctor Strange? Or are we gonna have to just wait for another season? You know, those are the things that start to make it kind of complicated. It's it and it, it's it's fun, but it's also frustrating because you're so used, to, you know. I'm old school. I'm used to all right, seasons ended. We got about a good six to eight months. And then it's for sure going to be back on television, right? Uh, now it could be like, hey, six episodes, that's it. Hey, tune in to when you'll see them again next. And then you're just like, WTF. You know, there's so much of this world, especially with Moon Knight, because like you said, he's not one of those. It's almost like kind of how they did Iron Man, if you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. He's not one of those characters that we know about as much as we did like Spider-Man, right? right. So our Batman, you know, those are two good examples. What's the biggest thing we hate now about Spider-Man and Batman when they do a reboot? We're going to consistently see when Uncle Ben dies and yep. Martha Wayne's pearls, yep. right? And, we're, and everyone is like, I know that scene, right? With Moon Knight, you have no clue of his, of it, it. I mean, you know, according to the books, you know, like you mentioned the Jeff Lemire version. I've read the Warren Ellis version um, and, you know, they're broadly different, d differentiate on how he came up to be Moon Knight. And then, uh, Mike, I think you remember this. Uh, there's another version of Mark Spector who's a billionaire, right? right. Which right. he doesn't seem to be in this current version, right? From what we know so far. So uh, they, have, they have a very good um, playground to play in as far as Moon Knight. I just hope that hey maybe like the mandalorian we can keep this to even you know give me eight episodes and let's keep this thing going oscar isaac does so much and i'm i'm super appreciative of what he's doing because like you know he was just in dune he was just in star wars he was just in there's a whole bunch of stuff i can name you yeah know? he's a busy so, dude yeah yeah you know and he got a family right like yeah, yeah, yeah you know so I'm, I'm super appreciative but at the same time um it, it's 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 one of them, those cons that isn't really a con for me. It just kind of sucks sometimes because you would like to get more, you know, a, a standard show, a, a standard season used to be 12, ep uh, excuse me, when I was coming up, a standard season was 22 to 25 episodes. Look at Babylon 5 or right. Star Trek back in right. the day, like that 20 episodes. And we, we got to the time that where 10 to 12 was ideal and now we're getting the six to eight 
Before right. you know, it's going to be four. You know, it's like, you know, like literally like, hey, here's your season. It's four episodes. See you next year. And right. You know, like, wait a second. Well, and I feel like you almost got to kind of treat these like little mini movies, right? Um, yeah. That's because true. the budget on these things are so high. Um, you know, the production value is so high. Like, I was impressed with what I saw, you know, the, especially in the second episode when he's fighting the the Egyptian, you know, hound. Uh, and I was like, oh, man, the production is, is huge. I understand why it's six episodes. Um, what is more interesting to me, and so the interview I was, I was speaking of, when they're talking about Oscar Isaac and why he he chose this role, he said that Kevin Feige get, gave him scripts for the first episode and the fifth episode, and that's what hooked him. Um, so it makes me think, well, what's going to happen in the fifth episode? You know, um, and I've also seen I and I gotta I gotta try to find this article, uh, but I've also seen where allegedly. Moon Knight's going to be a part of this new Avengers team. So we'll have, I don't, I don't know if we'll have another season of Moon Knight. Mm -hmm. And if this is just an introductory, hey, this is who Moon Knight is type deal. Because um, that's kind of like what it seems like with Miss Marvel, right? This is Miss Marvel. This is who she is. And then we're going to see her in the new Captain Marvel movie. Um, and so, uh, I'm wondering if that's how it's going to be for the Moon Knight. You know, okay, this is who Moon Knight is. Um, and then going forward in the MCU, he's going to be a part of the, of the like, the new Avengers team. Yeah, uh, I heard something like that. And also heard where he's like, uh, was it Dead by Day Night? I can't remember the name of the team where it's like him, Ghost Rider, Blade, and someone else. Um, and I can't recall who that is at the moment but right they'll be uh, like an avengers dark team you know like yeah Justice yeah dark. yep 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 so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do with them and i'm super excited mike before we move on uh who are you betting shows up in moon knight oh that's a good question uh you know so you just mentioned that i think Maybe we'll see like a Blade cameo, mm -hmm. and not even so much as we'll see Blade, but just like internals, we'll hear his voice. Mm -hmm. Um, I can kind of see that. Uh, I can also kind of see uh, not Doctor Strange, but uh, his his homeboy. Um, uh, was it Wu? I can't, oh, I can't yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, his name escapes me at the moment. But, but I, know I, can kinda, I can kind of see him be like, okay, hey, look, welcome to the squad. This is the team that you're going to be in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is that that Avengers Dark team. Um, mm -hmm. So I can kind of see that. Uh, I can also kind of see an iteration of Hulk or She-Hulk, uh, only because... I know there is a uh, a Hulk run. Can't remember if it was by Jason Aaron or somebody else, uh, where the Hulk and uh, Moon Knight uh, eventually end up in Vegas. Mm. Um, and so I don't know. I that's a man. That's a good question. Um, you know who I have my money on, mm -hmm. um, and it's it. It's just uh, my own thoughts, and I agree with you. I could see a lot of those characters, especially Blade, coming through. I could actually see him coming in costume, right? Okay, just like showing up real quick, or j not in costume, but like coming up in a suit, saying, "Hey, I need to talk to you. We got a threat over here," and then it just kind of opens the door for them to show up and whatever right, right. else, yeah. right? Yeah. But I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be mad if I saw Daredevil in this, okay. right? I, I, you know, I could see uh, a situation where, you know, same thing, like, you know, Daredevil, The Hand, Moon Knight, something of, of that sort pops up and, you know, it requires them to 
to do something together. It might not be a full team up, but you know, just where he there's a cameo or something that shows up. Right. You know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if we're just if we're just throwing stuff to the wind here, uh, maybe Doctor Strange. Um, I, again, I think, like you said, Mike, I think we would see more his companion than him himself. Mm-hmm. But I could see Doctor Strange as someone of that sort popping in there. Or what about uh, old girl? Uh, what's her, what's her name? Liv Driver or from um, the uh, the um, Witcher Soldier and the Falcon? Um, oh, where she where she recruited? Uh, yeah. Oh boy, Sharon Carter. Yeah. Well, not yeah. even Sharon. Not Sharon Carter. The the other chick. The the dark haired chick. Um, the older one. Um, from Friends or not Friends? Uh, oh, I met your mother. Oh, oh no, 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 no! I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Crap. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what is her name? Uh, uh, Madam freaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Madam Hydra. Yeah. Madam Hydra. Right. So I, I could because she's been collecting. So she got Black Widow's sister, mm-hmm. um, uh, Doctor Strange's uh, homeboy. Um, so and then of course the the dude. Um, I can't remember anybody's names now, but the dude. Uh, from uh, Captain uh, or Sam Wilson in the Winter Soldier. Uh, and so I can see maybe, U.S. agent. Yeah, U.S. agent. Mm-hmm. So I can see maybe her recruiting Moon Knight because they have, because Khonshu seems like the kind of guy that, uh, and I don't, I, and I've, I've seen this comparison mm-hmm. before and I don't agree with it, but like, but now I'm starting to be like, okay, so. You know, there's always this comparison that Moon Knight is the Marvel version of D- of Batman, mm. um, where he's all oh, vengeance and blah 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 blah. Um, so I can kind of see her recruiting him because Kanchu, at least in these first two episodes, is seems and, and this is from what Ethan Hawke's character has basically said. Like, you know, he's always late to the game. You know, by the, by the time he's there, it, the crime has already happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then he's all about taking care of it at, after the fact. Yeah. Um, and so I can kind of see her stepping in and say, hey, you know, Kanchu, hey, Moon Knight um, or Mr. Moon Knight or Mr. Knight, yo, join our squad and we'll we'll take care of it because they kind of have that similar morality code where we will avenge uh what has been done already and i i i kind of i kind of see how that that could work yeah yeah i i i agree um yeah it's fun to see who's going to pop up cuz we know someone is so i'm super excited to see who we get and then who shows up right and then it might here's the thing we're looking at heroes it might be a villain that we that we didn't think of kingpin right. might show up Right. right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, again, or or someone else, you know. But it's just exciting. It's so exciting, right? Um. Just uh, in the sense of it's for like it, it's still the my 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 wet dream as a kid, right? To you know see all this play out on some sort of screen, and here we are. And, you know, again, we we got Moon Knight now, right? Uh, Mobius just came out in theaters, which I haven't seen yet, and uh, we'll we'll pass on that for the time being. But you know, there's there's so many things that are coming out that I just never assumed that, other than maybe seeing the animated version of them, I would have never saw on television. So, right. Yeah, and the fact that Kevin has and Kevin Feige has somehow I don't know how he does this. I don't know how he's done this. Have wo- has woven this grand story mm-hmm. um, to make it to make you be like, okay, so we've had we had twenty some odd movies to get to Endgame, and it was it was well worth it. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so now we're starting all over, and now we're get, getting the multiverse, mm-hmm. uh, and now we got this other grand story that's happening. Um, and we're asking all these questions, which is great. 
this is what we've been waiting for, you know? Like you said, before it was, we could only get this in an animated type of situation. But now we've got this live action stuff and it's amazing. Uh, why can't <laughs> why can't Warner Brothers and DC get this? Get oh this my God. Yo, <laughs> so I, I, you know what's so funny? And, and we're going to talk about DC in just a second. But just real quick, Michael, me and you talked during the early iterations of our show about, especially uh, me, you, and Andrew sat there after I think Endgame, uh, our good friend uh, Andrew, we talked about um, uh, fatigue after all of these movies, yeah. right? And I must admit, uh, I am no longer fatigued, right? Um, I, I will admit that I think about right around the time it, uh, Eternals came out, I was kind of like, eh, I guess they're going to drop the ball on these new phases. But between the TV shows um, and Spider-Man and seeing what's coming with Doctor Strange, I'm already hooked again i gotta live to be 120 because there's this you know now like i feel like we're this close to seeing some key things being the x-men coming the fantastic four coming oh and i can't wait i feel like it's coming and i hope it is that battle between black panther and namor right like i just feel those three things are coming one way or another yeah you know, and let's and let's be clear because we don't think about this right now. We're just talking about what we are talking about now. There's still Armor Wars, the series coming out. There's still Blade coming out. There's still Ironheart coming out somewhere. Yep, Secret Marvel, Invasion. Secret Invasions coming out. There's still so much more coming out. And here's the thing, like you said, Mike, Feige is, has created this whole instrument, but I still don't know the end game it's funny to say that you know having a movie but like i thought the transition between captain america and iron man would be hard to process i am not even tripping i am not even tripping anymore in in that sense like think about it guardians of the galaxy is on this last movie right mm -hmm. you know batista's already said you know hey i'm getting i'm 57 now i can't be doing this anymore you right. know and and all these other which i understand you know sometimes you got to get out the game but that stuff is eventually going to leave, and it seems like Marvel has said, "Hey, this character's leaving, but we got three things that we're ready to place it with, and we're still moving, we're still rocking, right?" Yeah, it's it's amazing how they've been able to pique our interest, mm -hmm. and it's it it just like you said with the fatigue, you're like, okay, after. In game, you're like, all right, I can take a break, but man, with all this, I, and I think it's because of the shows. You mm -hmm. know, the shows have gotten you so hyped up, like, oh my god, they've got so much stuff. I can't wait for Miss Marvel. I, yep. That's the one I'm really looking forward to. Super excited because um, so, you know what? It's a big gamble. And, and yeah. when I say that, I say that respectfully because I'm, I'm happy to see the representation. But it's a big gamble on the sense of it is. It's almost like introducing Miles Morales, yeah. right? To the to the to the that's exactly casuals. what it is. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, that's so. exactly. What, hey, when I saw the trailer, I was like, "This is literally the the Spider Man into Spider Verse equivalent." Uh, and you know, you're introducing a uh, a female Muslim American. Mm -hmm. and who who's in high school and trying to deal with you know being in high school and her her muslim faith and this and that and uh yeah it yes there so yes there are so many intriguing things that are happening with marvel right now and i'm not sure i i feel like they're trying to do the the new iteration of Secret Wars, okay, mm -hmm. uh, where you have the end of the multiverse, mm -hmm. uh, and you're gonna have—I I don't know if they'll have a battle world, uh, but they'll have something similar to that. And I think because of the first 
I'll, I'll say the first phase, the first 20 some odd movies. Now, at least for me, I look at it as, okay, I know what to look for now. Mm. Uh, and I know what clues to look for. I mean, with the Eternals, now you're talking about the Celestials, okay? Mm -hmm. And they're bringing the Celestials into it. And you know you're going to see Galactus. Okay, cool. All right. Um, and now you've got all these shows where you're bringing in Moon Knight and you've got Miss Marvel. Okay, cool. They're, you know, and then you're bringing back in Charlie Cox as Daredevil and you Vincent D'Onofrio as the Kingpin and probably the rest of the Netflix crew. Uh, hopefully not uh, Iron, Iron Fist, Fist. Uh, but you're bringing this crew back into the MCU. Man, that's going to be awesome. All right. So now you got Doctor Strange and um, and then from the Loki TV series, uh, you've got Loki and uh, then you've even got um, uh, the main uh, villain or I, I guess main villain. I don't even know if he's a, a, a villain. Um, Kane the Conqueror. Kane the Conqueror. Yeah. Uh, but you've got him and, and what he's going to be. And I've read articles where Kane the Conqueror you're going to see a bunch of different versions yep. of Kane the Conqueror. He's a time and, traveler in two right. dimensions. Yep. Where you'll see the ultimate Kane Conqueror, who is the, the main villain. Um, and how, but then you see the others and how that war has uh, trickled out. So there's just so much that you're so intrigued about. And you just know that there there's a plan. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so. I think Marvel and D's or Marvel and Disney and Kevin Feige have got it squared away. At uh, Sony, I, I I want to see Morbius, but I've heard it's not that great. Um, but it's Sony, so I'm not too. So so I agree with you. I've heard the same thing about Mobius. I heard that it's not that great, but I also heard that if you have no understanding of his previous history, that you can be object. Uh, you can be objective enough to like it. Yeah. Right. So I yeah, think I if you can get down with that. I, yeah. I, I don't know much about Morbius, um, yeah. but I also look at Sony as, you know, the kind of like Fox where they're, or even Warner brothers where they're just trying to get that money grab. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the day, Kevin Feige is going to rope in those characters into the MCU mm -hmm. in a way that we appreciate it. Um, you know, like you mentioned before with Venom, mm -hmm. I still haven't seen the second Venom. I don't even know if I'm going to see it. Uh, I don't even know if there's a reason to even see it. You know, the first one if was... If you can't find anything else to watch, then I would say watch it. Like, right. the first one is serviceable enough for me to, to say I could watch it right. a few times, right? Uh, but that second one between casting Woody Harrelson, which I think was a bad move, um, just the overall story and just the fact that um, the, the symbiote himself is just insufferable yeah. this time around. Um, yeah, I couldn't stand it. Yeah, and, and that's I think that's what I mean. You know, like I you said it perfectly. The first one was serviceable. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't the greatest thing since sliced bread. Nope. Um, and so the second one I knew was bad. Uh, so I don't I don't think I'll ever watch it. All I all I have to know is that they have a tie in at the end uh, mm -hmm. for the MCU. Um, so and they did it so smart uh, after you watch that new Spider-Man movie. Mm -hmm. it, 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 they did it so smart that they kind of said, hey, now we can not bring Tom Hardy's Venom into this and we can bring a whole new Venom, which is fine by me. Right. And so, like, there's so many things to look forward to. Like you said, I'm. Looking forward to the X-Men. I'm looking forward to the Fantastic Four. And these mm -hmm. are all things that we're all looking forward to. Uh, but when you look at DC and Warner Brothers and what they're doing, you're just like, <sighs> you know what? <laughs> Let's talk about that, right? Because uh, Ezra Miller decided he didn't give a fuck anymore and decided to even go further into messing up DC's plans, right? If it wasn't for the fact that we probably never see the Justice League again Ugh. on the silver screen between the litigation between Ray Fisher and Warner Brothers or Henry Cavill as Superman 
and Ben Affleck leaving as Batman. And then uh, now we have another Batman out there as Robert Pattinson. And then uh, the the worst of the worst being that 1984 version of Wonder Woman, you know, and, Ugh. you know, funny enough, the only one who kind of still stands tall amongst all of this is one of the characters that people pretty much couldn't stand at one time, Aquaman, right? right. But he's kind of came out of this unscathed because he hasn't been wilding out like everybody else, right? And so now we're dealing with the fact that Ezra Miller has gotten arrested here on the island close to me. Uh, he got uh, arrested. I, I would live on Oahu, and I believe he got arrested on the big island in Hilo, Hawaii, for a charge of um, basically disorderly conduct. But his conduct, this isn't the first time, right? So his conduct has been, it's been a bit haywire for a couple of years now where he, he was arrested previously because he apparently assaulted a woman. And when I say assault, I believe he didn't uh, like beat her down, but he did strike her. Uh, for right, some, he he had his hands on her throat, like he was choking yes, her out. Yes, absolutely. And somehow, uh, I won't say that got swept under the rug, but I guess there was more to that than than meets the eye. But his behavior throughout the years has become more erratic. Apparently, when he's on when he's on the job, he's just as bad. And so now, Warner Brothers uh, has reportedly had an emergency meeting on whether to continue to proceed for it as Ezra Miller as The Flash. And if they got rid of him, it seems like the consensus is to give it to Grant Gunston, who is already playing The Flash on the TV show. Right. And so here we are and here we stand. Uh, and, and I want to make it clear, this is not Warner Brothers' fault. I can fault them for a lot of things, but this is all on Ezra Miller and his behavior. Uh, but it also kind of puts a bind into DC because do you either applaud the bad behavior, which is kind of increased after what took place at the Oscars? You know what happened. You can look it up. I'm not talking about that anymore. Um, but or you can, or do you say, hey, well, you know, because think about it, like reshoots have to be done. I, I think the movie, it's already started filming. Um, so what, what are you going to do? Just stop now and then say, Hey, Grant, we're going to go ahead and put you in the role now. Right. Like, right. uh, like in like someone joked, they're like, this movie's never going to get made because it's already had issues. It had, they're going to have cyborg in it. And then Ray Fisher, uh, launched his discrepancies with Warner brothers, which he's more than welcome to do. And Warner brothers decided that, you know, well, then we no longer want to have him in these movies anymore. Um, right. it's just all a mess. It's all a mess. We already kind of talked about the fact that between Peacemaker and Suicide Squad, I watched the Joker the other day and it got me thinking about some things between the Batman. Um, and we still don't have any Superman out here. It, it's just all a mess. And and Wonder Woman got to come hard for this third one. Like, I, stop with the time pieces. Y'all got to come hard because y'all really kind of personally to me set back the Wonder Woman franchise with that second movie. It was Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. So I'm I'm really wondering where are they going to go with this? And then you know what? Uh let's be clear. Yo, where is a Shazam or Black Adam trailer? Stop playing. Like you right. gotta get something positive out here. Like I mean of course you don't gotta go off of my whim but like I'll even be clear there's um there was another movie they were talking about recently and they've been slow. I think it might've even been Dr. Strange, but they were talking about how they've been so slow to get in the trailer out. And here's the thing. Marvel kind of has that leeway because they know you're showing up. There's no mm -hmm. question. They know mm -hmm. you're showing up. They could, they could literally just have a kid draw a poster and then play it with music in the background. And they know you're going to show up, but DC is still fighting to get people because, like, you know, Mike, I remember me and you and the excitement when Batman v Superman was coming out. Oh man, they're gonna get butts and seats, it's gonna be amazing. And they failed. Justice League, same thing. And y'all still talking Snyderverse. Y'all still talking Snyderverse. 
Right. Like, look, it was dope. Don't get it wrong. It's dope. But man, if if Zack Snyder can't make a two hour movie to save his life, then why are we doing this? Right. Yeah. You know, COVID's over. There's no reason for me to sit three hours. You know, like the Batman was a, a very rare case. You know, and I, I might we we haven't talked about that yet either. But you know, I know you ha- you were like I could have watched that at home. But still, like yo, there's very few movies that's going to make me stay in the theater for three damn hours. Right. You know? Right. So, Mike, what's yeah. your thoughts about the whole Flash situation and then just DC overall? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, Ezra Miller is this guy who he's super weird. He's 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 very weird. Uh, we he's already had the previous incidents where he allegedly choked out this woman, and um, you know we're not sure what happened with that, how it was swept under the rug, whatever. And then now you have this thing in Hawaii, and it was there was two incidents. You know there was the the bar thing, okay, where he um, got into an altercation with with girls who were karaokeing. Uh, and then allegedly he was staying with a, a, a married couple um, and he threatened their life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I forgot about that. Uh, you know, they, they got a restraining order against him and I don't know. It, he, he's just a weird cat. Uh, and it's not even just Flash that is uh, up in arms for debate. It's also uh his because he's also in the Harry Potter universe and uh he's in the 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 prequel movies of Harry Potter um the Fantastic Beast movies and so that's also up for debate and so of course what Warner Brothers has come out and they say oh no we haven't had this you know high profile meaning okay whatever um I I don't think I, I honestly don't think they're going to do anything unless some major charges come out. Because, um, I mean, we just looked at, you know, before everybody went on vacation, you know, you and I were talking about uh, old boy that plays Homelander on The Boys and him wilding out. And mm-hmm. actually, and I, <laughs> speaking of, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, like, you know, old boy who's, who plays Homelander. You know, we're talking about like, oh, well, who is this guy, and why does he think he needs to wild out in Spain? Um, I just realized he actually had a show prior to the boys that was on Showtime, uh, or no, 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 it was on HBO, and uh, he played like this, uh, this like rogue badass, like master thief or whatever. Uh, I and I'm trying to think of the name of the show, uh, but. I actually started watching it again. I'm like, yeah, I can see why he feels like he could, he could do this uh, in the civilian world. And I guarantee you, if you looked at Ezra Miller's previous films or whatever he's starred in, uh, you can see the same thing. Like, this is totally predictable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I don't think that Ezra is going to be punished for this. Um I, as you said before, I think Warner Brothers has already sunk too much money into this. Like, what are you going to do? You, are you going to completely reshoot this movie um, with a, a completely different guy that came from the small screen? Um, no, I don't think that works at all. Uh, so I think they're just going to let him do what he's going to do. Um, I mean, you look at Johnny Depp and all the, all the drama that him and Amber Heard is it Amber Heard? Um, yes, it's Amber Heard. Him and Amber Heard have had, and she, speaking of Aquaman, is uh, a key figure in the Aquaman mm-hmm. uh, movies. And, and they're, so they're they are protesting for her exit. Yeah, you know because of um. Of and, the, and, and I want to say I have done no research, so uh, but from my understanding, um, he's been vindicated for I guess what she was assaulting him and stuff like that. It's it's all it's a mess. mess. It's yeah. a mess. It's a complete yeah. mess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I don't see anything happening um, unless the backlash is so bad 
you know, it's weird because you talk about physical things that have happened. And I'm thinking about the Mandalorian and uh oh girl um the the former U- ufc fighter uh, gina uh, carano yeah and she's gone she's out she didn't do any physical stuff she just has some political views mm-hmm. um and they fired her and it's like wow okay um they fired her but warner brothers is gonna i warner's warner brothers is gonna let this fly yeah, I, I truly believe they're gonna let this fly. Um, Ezra Miller put hands on people. He's had a history of putting hands on people, um, and they're gonna let this fly. They're not gonna punish him. Um, just the same thing with uh, the boys actor who plays the guy who plays Homelander. Mm-hmm. They're gonna let it fly. Whatever. I, it's it's whatever. It happened in Spain. We don't care. <laughs> um, it didn't happen in America. Uh. Now, if they, if either of those two actors had said any kind of political shit, they might be done. <laughs> you know? Oh, mm-hmm. mm, nope, nope, nope. Political shit. You're you're out of here. Um, but it, I don't know. It's interesting to me. I I don't know. I don't, Ezra Miller's not going to go anywhere. I I think that business wise, you'd be stupid too, unless he, you know, unless photos surface from tmz that uh people have black eyes or you know bloody noses and are hospitalized i don't think anything's gonna happen to ezra uh yeah and you're certainly not gonna put uh your boy grant from the wb um uh, or the cw into that role uh i know he's wanted to be in that role but he's small screen you know you, you've never seen any small screen cat uh, go into the big screen movie wise you just have it um and they're not gonna start with him uh so yeah i yeah there's there's a lot more that's gonna have to happen and unless there's litigation that's gonna stop filming and stuff like that which i which i highly doubt um and then you know out of anything this might be um warner brothers way of trying trying quotations to give a wake up call to Ezra Miller to, you know, stop screwing up because right. you can be replaced. Right. Right. They might have some harsh words. Yeah. You know, they might say, hey, look, we're looking to interview or cast mm-hmm. somebody else. Um, Arlo cancels a movie outright instead right. of. And that uh, would suck because you, you're you we've had some kind of. You know, it, it they 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 pitched it as a flashpoint event Mm -hmm. where now you can bring in a multiverse um, and probably bring in some of these other movies. Uh, But now if you take that away, then it's like, what are you going to do? You know, Um, I like Robert Pattinson as Batman. Uh, I hope he stays. He said, that Yo, he's... let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about that because you were just going to see it, yeah. Uh, before when I was on spring break with the family, and then we didn't get much time to talk about it because <laughs> by the time I got back, you were on spring break, <laughs> well, right? And and after we both had said, like, man, we're not going to the movie theater for three hours to watch this fucking movie, and then we both did. Hey, man, I I'm going to be honest and. And I say this with all sincerity. There's something about Batman. There's always been something about Batman that has made me take my ass to the theater. Right? There's always going to be a Batman movie that you watch. There's always going to be a Spider-Man movie that yep. you watch. Yeah. I mean, and they both, both of them, have, matter of fact, they're the only two movies that have forced me to go back into the theater. Yep. Even when I know there's still a pandemic. Yep. Right? Uh, yeah. So... Mike, I'll let you start this one. What was your thoughts on the Batman? Okay, so three hours. Um, so this is how it happens. You know, before we both said, we've got families. We can't take our families to a three-hour movie. Me specifically, I have a, at the time, was a six-month-year-old newborn girl. Um, 
I'm not taking her to a three hour movie. I'm not going to leave her with her grandparents for three hours. They can't handle it. Okay. Um, what movie did we watch? Uh, <laughs> that they barely handled it. I can't even remember, but we went to go see a movie and uh, they called us. I or think texted it was Spider Man. It, it probably was. was. You yeah. know what? It was. It was. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember getting a text afterwards like, Jen was like, she's like, we gotta get back to my parents' house now. Uh, Ada is is putting through the ringer. Uh, I'm like, damn. All right, cool. Uh, so a three hour Batman movie? No, it's not gonna happen. Uh, but my girl Jen, she's amazing. She's awesome. She said, you know what, Mike? Go take Elias. Go watch the movie. I'll deal with Ada. Are you sure? She's like, it's cool. Do it. All right, cool. Elias and I we had a guys' night. We went to uh, uh, it's oh god, what's it called? It's like Holly Hollywood Palms, uh, and it's one of those movie theaters where you can sit down, order dinner. You know, as an adult, I can order drinks, watch the movie. So <laughs> we go, we, we watch this movie, and man. It was, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I was always kind of leery about Robert Pattinson, you know, after, you know, his uh, previous uh, movies where he was a vampire and in the daylight, he turned into diamonds and shit like that. Like, ah, I, how could I see this guy as Batman? But then I saw uh, the Jonathan uh, Nolan movie, um, oh, not Inception. You mean Chris uh, Nolan movie Tenet or Chris? Yeah, Tenet. Mm-hmm. I saw Tenet. I saw him in it, and I was like, "All right, I can, I kind of get with this. I kind of mm-hmm. see him as Bruce Wayne." Uh, and so, Elias and I are sitting through this movie, and man, it was just, it was just damn good. Um, it was three hours too long. <sighs> you know, there was a point. Where Elias and I were like, okay, this has got to be the end, right? Um, and it wasn't. And we're like, well, how how much further can they go? And then they did. And you're like, wow, okay, cool. It was well worth it. Now, in retrospect, would I have gone to the movie theater to watch this movie? Hell no. Hell no. Uh, if you haven't watched it and it's still in the movie theaters... Just wait till it comes out on HBO Max, please. Uh, the main reason being it's three hours. Somebody's got to go to the bathroom. Okay. Mm-hmm. Aliyah said to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I didn't have to go. I, I was like, I was dedicated. I went to military mode. All right. I was like, man, if I'm going to pee, I'll pull this cup out and I'll pee in this damn cup. <laughs> all right. Um, so I went into military mode. All mm-hmm. right. Aliyah had no idea about that. Uh, so he had to go pee multiple times. Mm. Um, and he was, he was like, he's like, Mike, I don't want to go. I don't want to go, but I got to go. Uh, oh my God, there's, it's, something's going to happen. I was like, Elias, go. Cause if you pee your pants, then we're done. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. Uh, is it worth the three hours? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. It was a great, great. Let movie. me ask you this, Mike, because I will say. And you know it. Of course, it's build up, but it started slightly slower than I felt cool with. I was like, "All right, when are we getting somewhere?" Right? Uh, I don't know. Did you did you feel that at the beginning, like the nope. first thirty minutes? Nope, I was fine with it. Okay, I was absolutely fine with it. Okay, um, I I was fine with the entire pacing of the movie. Mm. The only reason. Mm-hmm. Was because when way back when, and this is a Frank Miller adaptation, right? Mm-hmm. When the animated, when those animated movies came out, came mm-hmm. out Batman Year One, mm-hmm. I already knew it was that, and so mm-hmm. I already knew. Okay, this is from Batman Year One. All right. As soon as Robert Pattinson started giving his monologue at the beginning of the movie, yeah, I already knew. It was going to be a slow grind. Mm. And I was down with it. I was absolutely down with it. Because if you took Batman out of this movie 
and just had Robert Pattinson as a private investigator. It, it still it would plays have been the a same dope way. movie. Yeah, it, it plays the same movie. way. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's how good. Excuse me. That's how good the movie was. Uh, so pacing wise, I was fine with it. Uh, never at any point, and I've had other people tell me what you just said. Mm. You know, there it was slow at certain points. Mm. For me, I had no issues with it. Now, I, w- I will say that even though I, I felt that way, it's it's probably because of how, because I didn't see your one, but I, I, I it was probably because of how I'm used to the the framework of Batman in previous films, right? Right. Because they, like, almost get to it within that first 30 minutes. Now, right. like you said, um, looking back, I don't recall looking at my watch, like, how much longer. Like most of the time I was looking at my watch because we had other engagements um, and I wanted to make sure there was still time to do whatever. Right. Um, But like, as I like, same thing like you, I was like, okay, it's gotta be done right here. Right. And then they were like, oh no, uh uh-uh. We have this whole other scene after the whole mayoral vote. And I'm like, holy shit. Right. Right. And and then, uh, you know, Batman's making mistakes, which was dope. Right. Um, Colin Farrell as Penguin was was crazy dope because he was awesome. He didn't look number one. He didn't look like himself at all by any means. Um, I can get down with this version of the Riddler. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought I thought it was it was a great eerie version. I like um, for me personally. And I really like that. Um, Batman didn't seem to just swing on everybody. Um which is unusual after you watch the other films, but it was great with how they did that, where he really did some detective work because, I mean, he's supposed to be the greatest uh, detective a lot, right? Um, right, and he relied on Alfred to help him with the detective work. Yes, yes. And well, and here's another thing, and, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that, because I look at the Batman as I look at the James Bond films, right? So mm-hmm. I got into the, the Bond films around the time Pierce... Brosman was was a uh, you know with Goldeneye right and so from my memory and I know Mike you you have a bit more knowledge on on the Bond films but from my memory I remember them relying so heavy on the gadgets in those Bond films right mm-hmm. and then when they moved over to Daniel Craig they dialed back the gadgets and went mm-hmm. more for the story pacing in the action right and when i look at the batman you know you didn't see batman going to his utility belt every three seconds don't get me wrong we got the batmobile we saw the thing where he was gliding through the streets and all that Mm -hmm. stuff and those made sense but he didn't continuously go over and over and over into his you know into his into his utility belt right where so I, i felt like compared to like you know, even the, the Chris Nolan versions and the versions before that, it was like, well, I'm stuck. Let me use another gadget. Well, I'm stuck. Let me use another gadget. This time it was like, OK, I got to use my brain. How I'm going to do this? OK, I can't do this as Batman. I got to do this as Bruce Wayne. I can't do it as Bruce Wayne. I got to do it as Batman. And I got to or I got to use Catwoman for this. Right. Like we still got the gadgets, but it wasn't like it wouldn't shock me a couple years ago if they had made this movie and then we would have saw the Batmobile, the Batwing, the Bat Submarine, just, you know, because that's just how they used to get down. Right. 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 And, and, and this time it was like, okay, like you said, it's year one. They peeled all of that back and, and, and it's like, okay, we'll do the little eye thing. We'll do the Batmobile, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. The Batmobile was, was smooth. Right. Like it, it worked, you know, it's, it, um, if we did like a top five list, it wouldn't be my top five, but for this movie, to me, it worked out perfectly. Man, that but, sound design on the Batmobile, like, yes, man, the rev up the, the turbine engine, the, yep. oh man, it was, yep. it was baller. Yeah, yep. no, it, it was, it was totally baller. I, uh, I think the, the reason I really loved this movie 
was because it was a year one. It was Batman trying to figure out who he is, you know, and then by the end of the film, he's talking about how he's got to be more, you know, because when he talks to the Riddler, you know, he's talking to Riddler at Arkham and he's thinking Riddler knows who he is. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's thinking he's about to out him, uh, which wasn't the case, Mm -hmm. but that was creative. Uh, I really that, love how they did that. That was awesome. Yeah. You know, because he, you know, before that, he's talking to Gordon. He's like, yo, I I appreciate you. Uh, you're a good cop, whatever mm-hmm. happens, you know. Yeah. And and then once he realizes the Riddler has no idea who he is, mm-hmm. you know, um, and that kind of harkens back to the DC new 52 Batman, uh, Death of the Family where batman finally gets the joker and um you know because the joker had gotten the whole bat family um yep. and had you know tortured them or whatever uh and so batman is thinking he knows my identity well the joker didn't know his identity he just knew batman mm-hmm. um and so to have that scene in arkham with uh the riddler was just so amazing and then to have batman at the very end of the movie start to realize i gotta be more than just a guy that is scaring everybody yeah like i gotta be the guy that is inspiration you know Mm -hmm. um which is what you got you had a more polished batman in the chris nolan movies you know he had all the gadgets he had the the uh the, the really big batmobile and the batwing and or or the tumbler you know, mm-hmm. like he had all those things. Whereas in this one, he's got a souped up charger with a fucking jet engine on it. Yep. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was just a very raw, you know, very raw. You know, one of my one of my colleagues at work, uh, the only thing he didn't like about the movie was that Bruce Wayne was not the ladies man that you're used to. Um, and so I I remember thinking like. And again, this is because I've watched the Batman Year One animated movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's not how he was in the Batman animated movie either, Um, Mm -hmm. because he's this guy who is still trying to figure out who he is. Yeah, he's still trying to figure out who he is. Yeah, and uh, and you know what? Sorry to cut you off, but I think we got the perfect amount of Bruce Wayne. We didn't get a lot, but we got enough, right? Absolutely. Like you know, when he showed up at the funeral, or or, you know, he's trying to piece things together. And, you know, like I told you before, if they show me that Pearl's falling scene one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. They didn't even touch it, right? right. Which was great. And so I think uh, all those elements combined, like, uh, I still felt like I I understood Bruce Wayne's pain for what he was doing. But you could see that he was retreating more into the suit instead of being himself, which I thought was fantastic. Right. Yeah, but, no, I that was a movie um that I really enjoyed. I really hope they do more with that. I, so here's a question. Did you watch they uh the director of the movie release the deleted scenes? Yep. Um mm-hmm. and did so did you watch the deleted scene with the Joker? I did not. Okay. And and I and I did that on purpose because from my understanding, unless something changes there's no intention of the joker appearing anytime soon which i'm not gonna lie to you i'm totally cool with so i don't know what the future plans are Mm -hmm. you know um i hope that they make more movies sure if they do that joker scene is clutch Mm -hmm. um it's really good uh and the way they left the movie at the end um, with who uh, the Riddler was talking to, who was the Joker, mm-hmm. uh, with the way they left it, I think it's going to be amazing. Because it's going to be the way, so the way it looks like is that, yes, it's the Joker, mm-hmm. but he hasn't even, him, he himself hasn't fully come into the his Joker. Joker persona. Mm-hmm. And I think that's amazing. Um, yeah. And so 
with DC and Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. uh, I think that you scrap the whole idea of trying to do what Marvel and Disney are doing. Mm-hmm. I think you just do what uh, self-contained stories. So mm-hmm. have your have Batman Robert Pattinson storyline. Boom. Mm-hmm. That's it. Just do more movies with that. They've already talked about doing a Catwoman's uh, spinoff with uh, Zoe Kravitz, who mm-hmm. I thought was amazing. I thought so she, did I. I she thought knocked she it was out the, the part too. Yeah, I thought she was the best Catwoman that we've seen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that uh, if you continue that route, like don't try to mix in Robert Pattinson's Batman with Ben Affleck's Batman and yeah. The Flash and Justice League and, and have him fart, you know, fight Dark Sea. Then yeah. I think you're going too far. Yeah, I think I think I, I agree with you, Mike. I think you keep it like that. You know, what? a matter of fact, I would say almost do it like how they've been kind of doing it now, where Suicide Squad still pays old to the old Justice League, right? And in that little universe stays off to the side, whereas the Batman, whatever comes this universe, whether it's Catwoman, maybe we get a Nightwing, a Robin, I don't know. But whatever comes of that stuff um, stays in its own little pocket, right? And uh, or like you said, keep them self-contained. Where you know, because like right now at this point, I want to—I don't know about a Teen Titans movie, but I want to see. Number one, I'm a bit concerned just because of all this little scheduling stuff. I want to see, you know, when is the, the the next the Batman coming, right? Like, I, of course, I'm not expecting next year for you to give me a new movie but damn son don't keep me waiting too long because this was really good right but uh you know it took five years for like black adam and i know i keep on playing back to black adam but you gave me 30 20 seconds of something that looks super exciting and i don't have anything else for it right uh i want to see what the jl uh the jla looks like and you know how that movie is going to turn i want to see what this next shazam movie is going to look like you know it's not my favorite movie but i would i'm curious just to see what they're going to do there's so much i would love to see of dc and they're just withholding it from me right and i don't understand why right Right. um and and you know personally i just like you said in, 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 in so many easy ways it's just like yo get your shit together yo and and find out how you you know, it, you know, respectfully, if they after the next line of movies, they were like, OK, we're going to dedicate six months to kind of cleaning this up and making this serviceable. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Just so that, you know, it makes sense with whatever's coming, you know, because right now it's just like, OK, let's try B- Birds of Prey. And I'll be clear. I love Birds of Prey, but I, it, you know, the theater didn't. So um, I know we're not going to probably get another one, though. So, okay, then what now? Are we going to get a Harley Quinn movie? Um, are, are we going to try to do Teen Titans? Are we going to try to do Titans? Or are we going to try to do blah, blah, blah? You know? Yeah. You know. Well, so I will say that I, I do believe they're going to continue the Batman mm-hmm. movies. Only mm-hmm. because... We're already going to have spinoffs of the Penguin and Jeff Gordon on HBO Max. Yep, yep. Hey, um, oh, that Gordon. Uh, sorry, Commissioner Gordon was by far one of my favorites. Yes, you know I, I do like J.K. Uh, J.K. Simmons did play Commissioner Gordon in the JLA stuff, and I think he did in the other Affleck Batman stuff. I can't remember. Uh, I know J.K. Simmons played Commissioner Gordon, and I was cool with him playing that. But right. my man from Westworld, I don't know why his name escapes me at the moment, he knocked it out the park. He gave Jeffrey, him so much Jeffrey more personality. Wright. Yeah, Jeffrey Wright gave him a whole lot more personality than what I was expecting. And I, I was super happy with that. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, um, I think so. Yeah, so Jeffrey Wright and uh, Colin Farrell are going to get their own spinoffs. On HBO Max, um, which I'm excited for. So, and uh, already, um, it, it hasn't been confirmed yet. Uh, but I would, I would think that Matt Reeves, who directed 
bat the batman uh he has already said that they're already working on a, a second movie so i i really believe if they if if we just talk about this universe all right and if they do what marvel has done which is to have big movies and then have little shows to introduce more big movies i think they're going to be good um so if you have the batman and they have these two shows with the penguin and uh and jim gordon and that kind of you know segues into the next batman uh movie i think that would be awesome i would love to see that uh you know we had the suicide squad uh and then we had the the peacemaker series okay so then you do another movie after that i uh, i think that that works out um as long as they do it the right way you know i love peacemaker the series better than i loved suicide squad the movie um and so hopefully and hopefully and and jeffrey wright's no stranger to doing hbo shows because he he did westworld uh so uh man yeah i really hope that uh we get a new a new uh the batman with uh um robert pattinson because that was a great movie i that was probably one of the best movies i've ever seen mm. uh, it was just really good you know i it's one of those movies that you kind of want to study uh to see the the angles and how they did the lighting and because it was very it was very it was dark like they mm -hmm. it was always you, you know there wasn't a whole lot of daylight to these movies mm -hmm. uh you know and how they had the sound design and how they had robert pattinson walk into certain fights or certain situations you know it's just a the the stop of the boots boom the boom the boom yep. the boom and it was just oh and the score killed it yeah it, it yeah. was it was amazing and then like we said before with the uh the sound design of the batmobile when uh he goes after colin farrell the penguin you know with the 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 tuning the the starting of that turbine engine within the batmobile and then they, he just goes after him and it was just uh man it was good it it was really good i i really enjoyed that movie yeah we got about a week i think next friday it will be on hbo max uh I yeah and i and i already told you and i was like you're gonna love this movie when it comes out we're gonna watch it uh i you know we'll do whatever we gotta do with the the baby but you're gonna love this movie and i can't wait because like i said i i loved the movie mm -hmm. uh i would have rather have seen it just at home just because i you know when we saw it in the theater we were all the, all the way in the back uh we had to wait for food and they've got our food order wrong and you know having to go to the bathroom and stuff like that uh at least when you're at home you've got your own home theater set up you know uh you can pause you can have whatever food you want to have have whatever drinks you want to have not pay the movie and, prices yeah mm -hmm. and i just think that like when especially with the way my setup is right now it's going to be amazing i yeah. can't wait in fact, this might be a movie I might buy on Blu-ray, you mm. know, because it's that good. Right. So uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, it's a good. It's a good movie. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, I totally agree. And you know, we're right around the corner. I think we're about two weeks away uh, from Doctor Strange. You know, Multiverse of Madness, or I might be butchering that title, but you know, Doctor Strange is right around the corner. And are you gonna, gonna see be having night? Huh? Are you gonna see that opening night? Oof. I would love to tell you that I'm gonna be a rebel and wait, but it's probably <laughs> I'm going to the theater. So I'm I, I know I am. <laughs> I, I I I would the only thing it only decision now is am I going by myself or am I going with the family? Right. Right. Uh my old my my favorite theater just reopened. 
and they just re they just renovated it and it now has reclining seats like the fancy one in the mall so i can pay matinee prices which are extremely cheap and smuggle my food in and all that good stuff and and really enjoy it the only thing is my daughter is going to not be interested and be bouncing around which is fine because everybody goes to the old theater for that reason Right. Uh, right. but I, I, I'm, I'm excited because I have to see what's going to happen. I don't, I, I, I watch Twitter a lot. I don't want to see it on Twitter. Mm. Um, I want to see it in person. If I can, and, and to be honest with you, if I can go opening night, night, like on a Thursday, I haven't done that in a long time since maybe, uh, Dare, I mean, uh, Deadpool, uh, I wouldn't mind doing that. I'm, you know, I'm taking the time to, go back to just, you know, enjoying some stuff, right? Um, in terms of, you know, I don't have to do the flair. Sometimes I only need to bring the family, just going out and, and you know, having a moment with myself, enjoying some amazing mm-hmm. stuff without having to explain it to somebody or whatever. I love doing that to my kids and my wife for that matter. But sometimes it's just like when I saw Deadpool, it was just fun just to not sure what we're going to get. And then seeing it happen, and then you're just like, oh, this is amazing, right? And, you know, kind of hear the other people's reactions, right? So, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, so super excited for that. Well, Mike, we didn't really get to talk about anything else that I really wanted to talk about, because I also wanted to talk about PlayStation's new PlayStation Plus service and all this other stuff, but we'll have to get to that another time. Uh, but it's or been Halo. fun. Yeah, our Halo. We can get to that soon because I haven't seen those first two episodes, and uh, I, I want to. I, eventually, I do want to hear your your conversation about the 180 that you did in regards to the show. Uh, but this has been episode 11, and I want to let you know now it's a pleasure to be back. Like I told Michael, I needed this. Okay, <laughs> when I say I needed this, I needed this. Right? We needed and, this. this. Yes. Was, yes. Yes. We needed this. Right. And uh, in the future, I am going to be guest starring on a podcast that will be named later in the future. But I, on the reverse, I'm hoping to have that guest come and those guests come and join us to get into this more geek culture stuff. So that's going to be exciting as well. Until then, we will see you next week for another episode of the Nation 80. Uh... <laughs> Mike, uh, head us out because apparently I just had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So we will see you next week. Keep your imagination up and we'll catch you later on the Nation 80 podcast.